I welcome you to Central Moments. I'm so glad to join with you again today. We have this week begun a series uh, out of a series of studies out of Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, his first one, known as First Thessalonians in our New Testament. And today he he uses some code words that have caused a lot of controversy in the Christian church. But to me, they give me great hope that, that I'm not here by accident, but as a part of Jesus' living church, I'm, I'm a part of God's chosen people. And as a part of God's people, I'm predestined, not like God says to that person, I'm predestining you to hell, and that person, I'm predestining you to heaven, but I'm predestined to become more and more like Christ. We're going to look at this as Paul, first of all, hints at it in verse 4 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you. He's chosen you. Now, Paul had started this church years earlier in Thessalonica, and we see that in Acts chapter 17, how all that happened. But he said, when you draw back and see the big picture, yeah, you know, I went and I preached in the synagogue. They kicked me out of the synagogue, so I preached to the rest of you, and, and a church started. You, you were there. But, but God was in this, and, and there's something of God's plan, because God's plan is always to have a people. And he said, he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you, not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. May that happen in our churches today and, and in our culture that seems so immune to conviction of sin and so unbelieving of the supernatural power of God. He said, he said, the evidence that you're chosen is that something transformationally happened in your lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. That it wasn't just my church planning strategy and, and the fact I was willing to show up in your city. It, 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 was, it was the work of God's Spirit that caused you to come together as a church and changed your lives. Uh, I did not come simply with words, but with power and with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. That's how you received the gospel. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 through 6 kind of elaborates on this. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In other words, he chose to have, his, ha have a people. Um, the idea of being chosen, the chosen, was sort of Old Testament co code for the people of God. You don't see in the Old Testament um, uh, words like, you are a collection of individuals that belong to me. No, it was always, you are my people. And sometimes we just overly individualize this in the New Testament, even though in, salvation is an individual experience. We together are called to be God's chosen people. Chosen people was how God's people were referred to in the Old Testament. And so he said he chose us before the creation. I mean, God ordained that he would have a people. In spite of the power structures of darkness in our world, God chose to have a people. And in love, he predestined us. And once again, he's going to tell us what he predestined us for. Not, not to hell, but he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, the creator, what kind of relationship could he have with it? Well, he predestined us to have the kind of relationship which would be of a parent to a child. Like, like we've been adopted into his family. We've been loved. We've been accepted. This is what he predestined, and this is what he chose us for. We can go to Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This is a favorite verse for many of us. In all things God's working. And, and he's working for our good. And then he's going to describe what that good is in the next verse. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. In other words, God takes all this, all the stuff we go through. Sometimes it's good stuff. A lot of times it's bad stuff. But in all things, God's working, what? To make us more and more like Jesus. This is what God predestined, that he would have a people that would belong to him and look more and more like him. Or John 15, 16, it's kind of one of my life verses. You did not chose me, choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you may go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. In other words, we are predestined to be increasingly Christ-like and increasingly Christ-empowered. That's God's will for your life. And so, Father, we say yes. We say, Lord, shape us. 
more and more to be like you through the good things that happen in our lives and the hard things shape us to be more like you and help us to be more empowered by your spirit in your life. Thank you. Before we chose you, you beat us to it and you chose us and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.